All right, everyone, welcome back to YouTube. On another episode today, we're dealing with a real-time uh, conversation here. <clears throat> and it's come out uh, um, amongst you know multiple news outlets, and obviously there's also people talking about this in social media, which if you follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a post on this, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do like a, a story on it, and probably a reel or something, but you know the conversation around this is, is really starting to bother me because I think a lot of ignorant and uneducated people who aren't actually looking into the data and the research and figuring out what's really being said here, I don't think they're actually having an opinion. I think it's just people flying off the cuff and it's a lot of people really arguing about masculinity who don't know fuck all about masculinity, right? So they've done zero research into it. And that's on both sides. Of the, one is, one is over-research and, and not over-research is a lot of research and no real application in the world. And then the other one is no research and only real application in the world. So the conflicts there are not really great. Um, so anyways, I digress. Welcome back. Let me get into this. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about here is what was said. Now, it was a clinician from the APA. They talked about how traditional masculinity is harmful to society, right? Or harmful, has harmful ideologies. So what, I'm going to read this verbatim. So the cl clinician's role, McDermott says, can be to encourage men to discard the harmful ideologies of traditional masculinity, i.e. violence and sexism, and find flexibility in the potential in potentially positive aspects like courage and leadership. He is he and his team are working on positive masculinity scales to capture people's adherence to the pro-social traits expected for men, something that has yet to be measured systematically. Now, okay, understand that, that what is being said here. First off, there's a there's a very uh, in my personal opinion there's a very negative statement being tied to masculinity, which is sexism and violence saying that just because you are a, you have masculinity, you inherently are going to have violence and sexism. I don't necessarily know that sexism is true. I know violence is something that more propensity for, for men in general. Um, and this go, goes back ancestrally. Men were the ones to have done violence as the protectors, biologically we've probably progressed in this way as the bigger stronger of the two sexes and therefore inherently took on violence as a trait that's been passed on uh not violence to, to, to do violence just to do violence but the fact that we have the propensity to do it um because of the fact of our role within a developing uh organism right because there's got to be something to protect there has to be that level i mean if you look in uh, if you look in the animal kingdom, and this is what, again, man, nobody talks about this shit. So it just really confuses me. And I spent a lot of time watching National Geographic in my years overseas. And one of the things that I think is flawed <clears throat> in this conversation is the fact that in the animal kingdom, the propensity for violence and actual violence uh, when it comes to protection is usually the mother. So even bigger male bears have been fought off by mother bears when their cubs are threatened. Likewise, even uh, male lions have been fought off by female lions when their cubs are threatened. This is something within the animal kingdom where men, they call it mama bear syndrome, and men are, uh, are defeated by women who are in the protective mode of their offspring, okay? So propensity for violence, they have that as well. So if we want to say that violence is inherently with, within men, it's also inherently within the female or the, the female uh, sex within the animal kingdom. And we see this also with mothers in general. Mothers are very protective over their offspring. In a lot of cases, we've seen it through social media. We've seen videos of this and they have high levels of, of anger. They have high levels of violence that they can conduct when they feel threatened. They also have high levels of strength they can access when their, their offspring is threatened. These are all things that are apparent and we've seen and are factual, yet nobody is talking about. So if we want to talk about violence, I think more of the more of the propensity for violence is associated with men because most pretty much all wars have been started by men within society. Um, and not only that, but then the protectionism of the tribe when the offspring isn't specifically targeted, right, has always been to men. The hunters have been the men, all of those things. So anything that is associated with violence transactionally from ancestral lines has been passed on from generation to generation. 
Therefore, yeah, there probably is a higher propensity for that. If we want to tie that to masculinity, I'll, I'll give I'll give them that. I'll hand them that, right? Violence. Do we want to say all violence is bad? No, absolutely not. Because I think violence has its place. There is a level to it in which it does have it does have a role within society and can be the benefit of people. When we look at things like Hitler trying to uh, erase an, an, an entire ethnic group, right? Like when we look at that, that's probably a good place for violence to be, right? To go and fight something like that, right? So there is that. Or when a woman is threatened or another human being is threatened, you see men with the, the ability to do very targeted, specific, and highly technical violence, they are able to protect people. That is a good place for violence. We, we do have that good place for it. Obviously, the negative place for violence is seen a lot, and that's usually done through the fact that media is a bunch of fear-mongering dickheads, and they want to just constantly promote hostility and fear and anger, but they don't show the good levels of violence that happen too, right? They're not, they're not equally showing that energetic exchange, right, where it's actually helping society in a lot of ways. So anyways, I digress. That's just one piece. But then the other piece is sexism. Now, I don't think this is inherently within within masculinity in general. And now I think there was a generational norm at some point where sexism was uh, was considered acceptable, right? I don't think it's, and I think it's probably necessary, it's probably more of a civilized construct than it is inherently within masculinity. Within masculinity. I don't agree with that. So I don't think men, and I know a lot of men, they don't walk around just being sexist fucking pigs, okay? And I've obviously lived my whole life 36 years as a man, right? So I can kind of speak to this. I didn't walk around and I was in a lot of alpha environments, dudes that are fucking just full blown in the masculine, full blown in the alpha male. And they were not sitting around being sexist pigs. It's not, this is just not like really a fact. So this is a subjective interpretation. So, but let's go ahead and paint the picture here. So this guy says that traditional masculinity and the harmful ideologies such as violence and sexism, right? I.e. violence and sexism. So let's talk to that. Okay. If sexism was really a version of masculinity, don't we think we'd probably want to get rid of it? I'm pretty sure all men would, right? Most men are probably like, what? Sexism is fucking masculinity. What do you mean? What are you talking about? I've never been sexist in my fucking life, right? But if we want to just go by this fucking clown's definition, we'll just, we'll do that. Right. And we'll say, OK, you're saying sexism is associated with masculinity. It's a negative ideology. OK, cool. What guy wouldn't want to get rid of that? So guys that are feeling like traditional masculinity is targeted, they're, what they're doing, it's it's men who are associated with the old the the old paradigm of like the protector, the provider, um, the presider, the 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 the. Uh, um, I don't know. Fuck the, the all kinds of other shit, I guess. I can't really think to another one on my, off the top of my head of, of like what is being said around those traditional versions of masculinity. But anyways, they kind of, those kind of encompass most of them. When you're looking at that, that, and you say, okay, that's your version of traditional masculinity. The guys that are getting offended are thinking they're, that's being attacked. Now, if that's your version of masculinity, First off, don't think that that's traditional because again, you know, I talked about this on another episode that does not cross general cross generate generation, generationally, generationally <laughs> go forward. Okay. Now that was a version of masculinity given to you by whatever generation valued that. And then that was handed to you. And then you said, that's the version of masculinity that you want. And you call it traditional because it came from an older generation, not actually traditional. We talked about this. Now, those men are feeling that their masculinity is threatened. So they're going on the defensive saying this fucking stuff is wrong. But if you look at the definition of what they're saying traditional masculinity is, no one would be opposed to that if it was actually real. So their version of traditional masculinity has to do with violence and sexism. Okay. Nobody's going to say that's wrong. Every man I know is going to say, yes, um, <clears throat> chaotic, random insidious violence is bad and sexism is bad. All men are going to say this. If that's your version of traditional masculinity, we all can agree that is a very bad version of masculinity. It's not true when we look at this from an objective view, but if we're just going to all agree that that's real, we're going to all say it's bad. Agreed. 
But all you guys out there that are getting offended from this fucking shit about people talking about traditional masculinity, you didn't actually research what they were fucking talking about when they referenced traditional masculinity. They gave their subjective view on it, which has no correlation to your view on what a traditional masculinity is. And you guys are speaking two fucking different languages with the same term and one of y'all is getting offended. So realize how dumb that conversation is when you're not even saying the same thing to one another. You're fucking, you have two completely separate interpretations and you have no clue that either one means something completely different for the same exact term. But yet that's the conversation that's having happening. This is like two four-year-olds arguing. There's no, there's no concept to it. There's no understanding from either one on why they're even arguing, right? So this is a big flaw in, in this, what's being put out right now. Now I get it. Like people are offended by it and they don't want to see that. And they, they think, they have their versions of traditional masculinity that that they hold true to themselves, but it's not really good. It's not really a, a, a true conversation. Now, what they what he does say, and if you heard me reference, he's, he and uh, that um, is to find flexibility in the potentially. And I don't like this word potentially. It's passive aggressive and it's bullshit because courage and leadership are are positive things. Um, and he says potentially positive aspects of courage and leadership. Now, courage and leadership are great, but guess what courage takes? Courage typically has some element of violence or some element of hostility. That's the whole point of courage is fear, right? Fear provokes courage. Courage could not exist without fear because if nobody feared, it wouldn't take courage to go into something that, that you knew was going to not be fearful, but fear provokes courage. So in that order, when we look at that, inherently fear usually is associated with bodily harm, okay? So there's either some form of violence or there's some form of, form of hostility. So confrontation, which then has what? Everybody say it with me, the ability to turn into violence, okay? <clears throat> this is the real conversation. This is why, man, Y'all fucking get so angry about the stupid shit being said. And it, this is what we talk about when we're refer re referring to misinformation. This is misinformation. Nothing that was put out in this article gives you the full context of what was being said. And then somebody is flying off the fucking handle. Well-meaning men. And this is what pisses me off. Y'all well-meaning men are flying off the fucking handle without actually doing the research into the facts of what is being said in the context. And then you guys look like fucking jackholes, right? So now you, you're deteriorating your value as somebody who could propel a positive version of masculinity to the next generation and even to this current generation, letting them realize that their interpretations are completely wrong and they're subjective to their own views. They're, they're, they have no place in, in, um, in any substantial form of masculinity, but you're causing the bigger issue because the fact that you aren't doing the research and reading. We just saw this for the last three years with a lot of people. So if you're doing this now with masculinity, you don't have a place to talk to mass, talk about masculinity then because you're just as part, you're just as big of the problem as this person is, as these people writing this article and the fact that, you know, this guy painting a, a negative picture on masculinity, even his positive ones by calling him potentially, right? But that's that's all real. These are just simple baseline facts of what we have to ascertain before we can start to have a conversation. There's got to be bigger questions about this. There's got to be more real talk about this because at the end of the day, if you're not having this conversation, understanding the context in which they're attack what they're attacking and understanding that it may not even be associated with you because the fact that you and the next guy next to you have no fucking similarities to traditional masculinity. You've just termed it that because you got it handed from an older generation. So you just said, oh, it's traditional. It's not, right? That needs to be fleshed out first before you start jumping in and having this conversation, man. You're gonna get fucking the floor wiped with you intellectually because you're misreading and you're misinterpreting, all right? So be better about that, man. This is part of where the evolution, in my opinion, of masculinity needs to be is the intellect. If you're not going, if you just fly off the handle emotionally at something, <clears throat> which they say emotional 
stuff is, is suppressed. It's true. Men do suppress a lot of emotions. But when we get very passionate and angry about something, we just fly right off the fucking handle. That's not suppressed, right? And you see this with the way men are speaking about this and coming out on social media talking about it, right? So that is inherently part of the, the flaw of what I experience men having today instead of saying, hey, let me actually use my intellect first. Let me do a little bit of rabbit hole research, go down the path of conversation and see where the context is from this and see probably where the article you're referring to got taken out of context by the writer because the writer didn't actually do a full research on it. Because as we all know, journalism today is dead. There is only subjective point of views. Nobody's objectively reporting on anything. So there's always some form of <clears throat> ambition or incentive behind promoting a certain narrative. We know this. This is a fucking fact in 2023, guys. Let's be honest. Okay. So if you know that, why are you not actually researching the narrative first before and the narrative and then what was behind the content text within that narrative, what was behind all of that and the studies, why are you not doing that research before you fly off the fucking handle? You're not serving anybody. And what you're doing is you're causing the problem of pissing a lot of other people off because the fact that you're giving a subjective view on top of a subjective view, which has no objectivity within it, and then you're programming other people to get angry and be in that fear place and doing the exact thing the media is doing because you refuse to actually do the proper education around it. Become an intellect, motherfuckers. Like, come on, man. <clears throat> I can't say this enough. Yes, I will cuss about it. I cuss. That's my thing. Like, it's just former military. That's who I am. I, I don't mind it. But they also have shown that studies support that people who cuss more are honest more. I don't have a reason to lie to you guys. I just want you to be higher levels of intellect so we can have further conversations about this with the people who seem to think they know what masculinity is and have no concept of it with, we can have those conversations with them and prove them wrong, but we can't do that until us as men, average everyday guys can reach higher levels of intellect and intelligence to have this conversation on a platform, in which these fucking people feel comfortable because they're, they're the weak, they're typically the weaker ones. They don't feel if they're not comfortable, they won't have the conversation with you. You got to get to the level of them intellectually so you can get to their comfort zone and embarrass them. But men, you can't do that if you're refusing to do this work, right? So let's start being higher levels of intellect. Let's start improving our intelligence and let's get to the level where we can have these conversations with those quote unquote intellects who are trying to tell us what masculinity and men are today in, in the world. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully there's some education in it for you. Hopefully you guys will go do some more research on this and start really improving yourself and your understanding of what's being said out there and what the flaws are in that conversation. All right. See y'all next time.